It's an interesting day in the world of Magic the Gathering. The bonus card for the exclusive Beetle and Grimm secret layer has been revealed. And on top of that, the Infinity spoilers today really look like they're phoning it in. Magic. I am a wizard! History. I'm an old wizard! The Magic Historian. My bones hurt. Greetings! Owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles, my friends, I hope the day finds you well because we have gathered to enjoy looking at some magical cardboard rectangles. We're going to take a look at the exclusive secret layer bonus card and we're going to take a look at a bunch of fun infinity cards. So with that being said, let's go look at them now. All right, we are starting out in the realm of normal magic cards with Dragon's Horde. So this is the Beetle and Grimm Special Edition Secret Layer Bonus Card. Dragon's Horde is three mana artifact that says whenever a dragon enters the battlefield under your control, put a gold counter on Dragon's Horde. Tap, remove a gold counter from Dragon's Horde, draw a card, and tap add one mana of any color. So obviously this is very flavorfully on point and the artwork is awesome. It totally elicits that feel of old school D&D. &D. Look at these ancient chests full of treasure. You've got a sword sticking up in the back. There's just mountains of gold. It's just a crazy amount of treasure. And if you look over in the corner in the bottom right, you can actually see the dragon's tail curled around that little rock spire. It's a nice little touch that's not noticeable at first. You just run in and be like, whoa, let me grab this chalice off the ground that's full of gold. Oh, wait a minute, there's the dragon. It's really, really cool flavor-wise. Admittedly, from a power level, this is not a super exciting card, but for dragon lovers, this is gonna be a home run. Now, let's talk about Uninsanity. Like I said, Wizards has been phoning it in. Here's your example. Phone a friend. Two blue and three for a sorcery that says, call someone and ask them to choose one. If they don't answer, an opponent chooses one. Don't explain anything else. You choose targets. So, A, gain control of target creature you don't control. B, choose target creature you control. Create two tokens that are each copies of it. C, take an extra turn after this one. Or D, draw seven cards. So, these are all very powerful effects for five mana. Straight up gaining a creature, like without even having to have an enchantment that sits on the creature that they can get rid of, is really powerful. Going ahead and making two copies of a creature your choice, very powerful. Taking an extra turn, obviously incredibly strong, that's time warp. And then drawing seven cards for five mana is also bonkers. So there are no real good choices here. I imagine a lot of the time, you're just your opponent's just basically gonna go, hey, you can have my worst creature, but if they don't have a creature out, then they can't even pick that, right? Like this is a very powerful card that is emulating the concept of who wants to be a millionaire, where you call your friend, and it's funny because it says, if they don't answer you, then an opponent chooses one. But it doesn't say they actually have to pick A, B, C, or D. So you can have a rules case where they answered, and but they didn't give you an actual answer to the question. And then you end up with a scenario where A, B, or C, or D wasn't picked. But in that case, basically the way I rule it is, if the person answering the phone call does not specifically pick one of those letters, then the opponent gets to, which does obviously lessen the power level of the spell and phoning a friend and asking them is usually just going to result in a random kind of scenario if it's somebody who doesn't know anything about the game then you're just going to get a random result if it is somebody you know who knows something about the game they might actually pick the wrong answer and i just realized the funniest thing to do is to pick up your phone and call your opponent if you're playing against your friend call them just wait and when they pick up the phone be like hey choose one and then no matter what they have to because if they don't choose on the phone then they have to choose when they get off the phone it's catch 22 all right so the artwork shows urza's head on one of those old really old school style phones and who is he calling who is he talking to in space i'm not sure who that is either way 
This is hilarious. Let's move on to the next card because I can stare at this art for a while. We've got Exchange of Words. This is my favorite card from today's spoilers. This thing is nuts. Two blue and one for an enchantment that says, when Exchange of Word enters the battlefield, choose two target creatures. For as long as Exchange of Words remains on the battlefield, exchange the text boxes of those creatures. That is epic and you'll notice this is not an acorn symbol card you can use this in regular magic and this does feel like a powerful effect that you could have in regular magic yes they've given it unflavor but there's no reason you couldn't have some sort of essence transfer that happens between two individuals where you can steal their abilities but not their entire body right like that is a cool idea it's a variation of a soul swap but in this case it's just a goofy little take a look at the artwork a johnny and angrath have had their heads swapped so they have each other's bodies no they have their own bodies but each other's heads and the flavor text says before criticizing walk a mile about 1.6 kilometers in their head that way when you do you're a mile away and you have their head i love this card and you know what another nice thing about this is normally effect like this would just be hey why don't i swap one of my creatures for yours but then you have summoning sickness as an issue with this as soon as you swap the text if the creature you just put the text onto like your creature was already out then it doesn't have summoning sickness so you can use whatever abilities it got right away Again, my favorite card from today's spoilers. After that, we've got, how is this a par three? Two blue and two for an enchantment that says, whenever you cast a spell, you may have target player mill X cards where X is the number of words in that spell's name. So, I mean, ultimately, to me, this is a very meh-ish kind of card. I like mill, but I, find, I don't know, I just... I feel like this is never really going to get used by most people. The fact that this is an insane mini golf course is kind of fun. It says, against the infinite backdrop of space, isn't all golf miniature? We're getting real deep. And you look at the artwork and it is some neon space age mini golf. Wow, it looks like your, your uh, ball could just fall right off the track like you're playing Mario Kart. That would be obnoxious. After that, gro <laughs> Groblin. Goblin Crucia Verbalis. And this is somebody who is a fan of crosswords. That's what that word actually means. I just thought that it was somebody who crucified people with their words. Oh, he's just destroying them. Anyways, one red and two for a one four goblin wizard guest. He has haste. When he enters the battlefield, create a colorless artifact token named your choice of A-E-I-O or U, not Y. Whenever goblin cruciverbalist attacks, Use the first letters of names of permanents you control. Spell a word you haven't spelled this game. It gets plus one plus zero until end of turn for each letter in that word. This is a fun little extra puzzle. And as somebody who enjoys and employs a bunch of archaic terminology, this is right up my alley. This is fun. The artwork shows this goblin staring at some kind of cube crossword puzzle. I do love the goofy little spire that's sticking out of his head with the little, the little rings. Very, like, 50s Jetson goofy space age nonsense. Next up is Priority Boarding. One red and two for an enchantment. This one's only uncommon, but it's very interesting. Whenever you roll a die, you may reveal the top card of your library. Do this only once each turn. Whenever you reveal a card with mana value less than the result this way, you may exile it. If you do, you may play it this turn. So this is an interesting get more red resources, like you can have it kind of pseudo card draw, and it is not an actual acorn card. So you can use this in regular dice rolling decks. So I'm not sure like what level of interest there is going to be in this kind of thing, but you can use it with the uh, insane Dungeons and Dragons Elder Dragons that make you roll 20 siders, right? So this one's interesting. The artwork is just ridiculous, right? You have the priority boarding, literally rocketing to the front of the line. At first, I thought the foot at the bottom there was a tail. I was like, does this lady have a tail? What's going on here? But no, it's just a foot. Moving on. Centaur of attention. Terrible. Two green and three for a 3-3 three, three centaur performer. When it enters the battlefield, roll five six-sided dice, store those results on it. 
At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may reroll any number of centaur attention stored results, and it gets plus X plus X, where X is the greatest number of stored results on it of the same value. That's pretty funky. So if you can get like a bunch of sixes on there, then you can give this thing six, six, and it'll be a nine, nine, but that's it. It doesn't have trample. It doesn't have anything else. So ultimately this is going to be a card that gets people who are excited about rolling dice giddy, but is just kind of. Eh, right like it's just a big creature and it's not super cheaply costed and I, like i mean it's a it's a centaur performer so i guess if you like that concept this card is a pretty big miss for me then we've got celebrate thousands <laughs> the clown robot five casting cost three three at the beginning of combat on your <laughs> combat on your turn roll two six-sided dice for each result of one it gets plus one plus one until end of turn for each other result, it gains the indicated ability until end of turn. If you roll doubles, it also gains double strike until end of turn. That's pretty funky, right? I mean, you're only going to get two different abilities overall unless you get doubles, but still, that's not too shabby. You got Menace, Vigilance, Lifelink, Flying, Indestructible. Roll two sixes, you got an Indestructible uh, Double Striker. That's not too shabby right there. You know, it's it's going to change from turn to turn, but I like it. It's funky. All right. Then we've got Grand Marshal Macy leading the Macy's Day Parade. One black, one white, and one for the 2-2 two, two human performer. You may choose not to untap her during your untap step. If you do, put a, pa a pause counter on her, then lose one life for each pause counter. Whenever she becomes untapped, remove all pause counters from her. And to untap, choose an until end of turn or this turn effect. As long as Macy remains tapped, that effect doesn't end. This is awesome. We already had an enchantment that does this in uh, like previous unsets, but it basically does it blanket across the board for everybody, right? This allows you to pinpoint abilities. And if you somehow want to, you can actually do it to your opponent's abilities too. It's a really, really fun ability. And it almost, I don't know, man, I guess I'm just kind of out of my mind from looking at all these uncards, but it really feels like it might not even, no, nah, never mind. It's too powerful for regular magic. What am I talking about? Okay, never mind. I have, I have been huffing too much of the infinity, guys. I've lost my mind. So I will not make that suggestion. That ability is bonkers. Okay, let's move on to the next card, who is Ambassador Blorpity Blorp Bloop. <laughs> okay, that name is a lot of fun. The fact that he's an ambassador adds that level of, look at me, I'm sophisticated and important. And then the name Blorpity Blorp Blorp is just pure absurdity. So, 3-3 three, three, Alien Advisor Guest that costs you five mana in total. This guy's an uncommon. When he enters the battlefield, you get three stickers. No, sorry, three coupons, right? No, they call them tickets. Never mind. Three tickets. You get three tickets, then you may put a sticker on a non-land permanent you own. And I'm going to show you a crazy sticker card after this. But So he gives you the three coupons that you can use to get your tickets, to get your stickers, so you can stick your tickets on your coupons. And then at the beginning of each combat, you can have his base power and toughness become equal to the total power and toughness of all stickers on permanents you control. So he can become a big, beefy sticker boy. So if you're down with stickers, which some people are and other people aren't, I'm going to be real... Uh, I don't care that much about the sticker concept in Magic, but I do actually just like stickers. So, this guy is funky. It's nothing, like, too exciting. The artwork shows him just leaning all Buzz Lightyear there on his little spaceship. Like, what's up, lady? You want to go for a space ride? The tips of my antennas here aren't the only thing that glows in the night. You know what I'm saying, girl? So, that's <laughs> Ambassador Blorp Blimp Blamp Blomp. And, let's take a look at this sticker card. This is the cool, fluffy Loxodon sticker card. If you haven't seen them, you don't know how they work. Basically, you can take stickers off of this card when you're told to by other cards. So at the top, you have name cards, so you can add these onto cards. So you could have Urza out, and you could be like, cool Urza, 
or Loxodon Urza, or Fluffy Urza, whatever it is you want to do. And then the stickers below, where you have devil horns, you can put that on Urza. You have a plate of weird, gigantic, deep-fried SpaghettiOs. And then you have a strange, stoic little Karn sticker. So these stickers I actually like just not even specifically to play magic with just to have the little stickers to put on boxes like this little Karn I love it so where it gets really interesting though is when you get to the text abilities right down at the very bottom you've got the power and toughness so you've got four two and five six and you can see the ticket coupon costs beside it right so it's two or four depending which ones you want to apply but ultimately those aren't super exciting the abilities are where it gets nutty so for two coupons you can add when this permanent leaves the battlefield draw a card that one's all right but for five coupons you can have whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control this permanent becomes a 13 13 eldrazi creature in addition to its other types until end of turn so you can just put a hidden eldrazi inside of anything that is epic and mega powerful and super exciting honestly i really dig that so these sticker cards are funky so with ambassador blorp blorp he would give you those coupons and then you would take and then he also gives you the ability at that point after giving you the coupons to pick one of these stickers and put it on a card so the stickers are a mixed bag it remains to be seen how people are going to react to them overall once they get out into the environment I'm expecting them to not have much of an impact, but to be silly fun, just like a variation of counters. So that being said, thanks for coming by my friends. Big shout out to my patrons for being awesome enough to support this channel. And I will see all of you in the next video and some of you for tonight's live stream. Have a good one.